You know, I don't think he does. People focus very much on the word evolution and on um, dissent with modification. But embedded in his appreciation of the history of the biological record were all these other aspects that, that he really, that led, you know, that appreciation of the, geo, of the biological record led him to really probing these other aspects that we had no inkling of, how long the history of the Earth was, um, the interconnectedness of change, um, the magnitude of change. So I think those are things that are underappreciated by most. Well, a, a whole lot. We did just begin to have the idea that, uh, that the Earth's climate had changed quite recently, as it turns out only about 20,000 years ago. And uh, we were dealing with a much colder world at that time, a world with, with a lot of high latitude ice. Um, that is now such a part and parcel of our, of our collective conscience that, that Pixar makes movies about it. You know, but that was not something that was very well known at the time. It was starting to come into, um, into its own then. Now, however, we appreciate that Earth's climate has changed way beyond those extremes. Um, instances of, of palm trees growing in Wyoming, you know, or, or times when the Earth may have been um, nearly consumed by ice. What Darwin was really um, getting at, the, the immutability of, of process, um, came from Charles Lyell and the concept of uniformitarianism, that, um, that processes that have operated in the past operate today. The physical laws have not changed. Gravity um, happened then the way it does today. What has changed are the boundary conditions um, around which those laws were operating. So for example, uh, today we know, we, we have physical laws that, that, um, that tell us about the greenhouse effect, for instance. Um, we have a certain amount of CO2 in the atmosphere today. In the geologic past, the amount of CO2 has been much different. There's, two, there's really two aspects to looking at climate of the time. There's sort of the, the broad aspect that overall that was a cold world. But in detail, um, on the details of, say, 10,000 years here or 10,000 years there, there may have been times that were warmer. There certainly were times that were warmer and times that were colder within that overall um, cold episode. As far as what caused it, that's something there are things that we know about that time, and there are things that we're still struggling with. We know that CO2, atmospheric CO2, was quite low, for instance, which would push the planet cooler. Um, we know that solar luminosity was weaker by a few percent, and that would have made the, the planet a bit cooler as well. Uh, remarkably, when you look at all of the geological record um, for which we have data and, and inferences, models, um, CO2 today is, is on, the, on the low side, geologically speaking, but it's on the high side when we look at the history of the last um, several tens of millions of years. Well, first I have to, um, I have to offer a disclaimer. That's a, a hypothesis, and it's a controversial one at that. Uh, the kind of evidence that, that we're um, bringing to bear on it is really similar to the kind of evidence that people were looking at back in Darwin's time, which is, um, the preservation of a landscape that we think dates to the late Paleozoic and that we think may have been carved by ice. Um, that, that's one of the more sort of spectacular ones if it, if it, uh, bears, if it bears out. I have to say that, that one of, um, oh, that, that I think it has to come from the appreciation at, at the, that the planet really is a system, an interconnected system of components that operate together, the biosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the cryosphere, and, and the solid part of the planet. Um, it's, it's something that uh, we're, we're appreciating more and more. It's breaking down the barriers between different disciplines, and it's where the big discoveries will come.